If we want to be motivated by love, if we understand, if we say, yeah, uh, fear programming and fear for our survival is not enough to generate the courage necessary to, to change our ways as a society or even as individuals, we have to be motivated by love, love for this planet, love for its forests, love for its soil, love for all beings here. Where does that love come from? It's only possible when we see them as beings, as something we can love. I think I said like, yeah, when I was talking about the horseshoe crabs, if we see them as nothing more than a brick, then why not turn them over and be entertained by their struggles? So this, this is the core of the indigenous worldview. And I rarely say the indigenous worldview because that erases the differences among indigenous people and cultures that saw the world in very different ways. But without exception, I have seen one thing in common, which is that they do not think that they are the only beings here. They see the world as alive and full of beings and full of being. And that's why I can say in this one case, I can say the indigenous worldview. So the core of it, yes, is the world is a being and therefore can receive our love and is worthy of our love is something that can be loved. It's something that can feel pain. It's something that can have a dream. It's something that can have a desire. If we hold it, if we hold the world as an insensate, insensate object, then why even ask, are we causing it pain? That's a ridiculous question. But if we know that this being that we love can feel pain, can feel anguish, then it's not so easy to continue doing what we're doing. And this is what one of the Kogi said in the movie Aluna. Um, I think it was in the movie or maybe in some of the material around the movie, but the, the Kogi said, if you knew she could feel, you would stop. Violence is facilitated by dehumanization interpersonally. Violence against women is facilitated by objectifying them, making them less than human, making them into an object. Exploitation of people, ec economic exploitation of people around the world is facilitated by reducing them to something less than full humans. They become a labor force or a market or uh, a consumer. Um, war is facilitated by the demonization of the enemy. And the same thing with the, with the despoliation of nature, with the exploitation of nature, the ruin of nature. It's facilitated by making it into less than a being. And then we can ignore what we really know on a body level, which is that she does feel, she does feel pain. We, we can block that knowing. We can shield ourselves with an ideology of productionistic materialism from the pain that we too feel when we wreak destruction on a beloved. And so how do we recover our sensitivity? You know, how do we recover our connection to our, our knowing that we're hurting something and that it hurts us too? And this is another, another dimension to the whole conversation about um, what world we want to live in and, and whether a concrete world is acceptable um, it can seem that we've kind of gotten off scot-free, scot that we've committed atrocity after atrocity on the living beings of this, of this world, and we're still doing fine. At least the privileged white elites are doing fine. They've gotten off scot-free. Why not continue to do that if we're not suffering the consequences? 
I don't think that that's actually true. I don't think that we have gotten off scot-free. I think that that we, we, on some level, feel the pain and the loss, but we don't even know what we've lost. All we feel is a loss, an emptiness that we can't identify. And we, so we endlessly search for something to fill that void, something to make it feel better, something to, to fill us up. Um, and those substitutes for the reconnection that we really want never can meet the hunger. It's only when we really go into the grief and recognize what's been lost that we are then capable of healing and reconnecting and of stopping doing it. If you don't know what's hurting, then what's to stop you from continuing to, to hurt? If you don't know that, I don't know, um, eating sugar is making you sick and it kind of tastes good, then why not keep, keep eating the sugar? But when you understand what's happening, then a chance for healing is available. And so this isn't about sugar. This is about harm. This is about violence. This is about killing. This is about ecocide. This is about dehumanization. It actually hurts ourselves. We suffer a loss of all that we've extinguished from the world. We've extinguished something inside. And that is the... That is why it's so important to allow in some grief, to, be, to, to feel the loss. Grief is, the, is actually feeling the loss and not holding it away, not denying it, but letting it in. And so it's part of a healing process. And then you know what hurts. And just like you won't stick your finger in a flame, you're not going to want to do that. You're not going to want to do something that hurts. So this is a, a, an essential reconnection. It's not just that we need an ideology, like a new spiritual teaching, a new world story that holds other beings as valid, as alive, as, as um, agents and subjects and conscious. That's part of it. But there's also the feeling level. There's also the trauma level. Like what has made us not feel what has calloused over our souls, what's made us numb. And this points to the unity of various levels of healing, how personal healing is necessary for ecological healing to even happen. So if your profession, if your calling is on the personal level, this is not to excuse you from politics, but it is to validate what you are doing as an essential part of the healing of the world. If your calling is to, is to make beauty, if your calling is to heal communities, if your calling is to spread kindness and generosity, these are also part of the healing of the world. If your calling is to point people toward what is actually hurting them and to give them a safe place to express their grief and to know their loss, then that is part of the healing of the world. And that goes totally contrary to the fundamentalism that says these things are distractions from the one true cause. The one action that will save the planet right now. The healing is on every level. We need to learn to be human again, all the way. We need to learn to feel again. And we each participate in that collective healing in a unique way. And we recognize what our part is through the call issued through our hearts to our love and our care. And we can trust that following that call, we will be put to best use by the intelligence of the world. As we align ourselves to a healed world, by listening to that call. Every act in service to life aligns us with a world that is more alive. And no, no effort is wasted, even if we 
can't say how it's going to make a difference. No effort is wasted. You could say every act, a ceremony. When it is in service to life, every act is a ceremony. 